Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question on projectile motion. Calculating the time of flight of a cricket ball, its vertical speed when it reaches the ground, and its vertical distance travelled during its flight. This question is from the 2011 Intermediate 2 paper. A cricketer strikes a ball. The ball leaves the bat horizontally at 20 metres per second. It hits the ground at a distance of 11 metres from the point where it was struck. Assume that air resistance is negligible. We're then asked to calculate the time of flight of the ball. So let's take a look at how the ball moves in the air once it's struck. This red arrow from left to right represents the ball's horizontal speed. I'll also draw an arrow pointing downwards which represents the ball's vertical speed. Since, as it says in the question, the ball leaves the bat horizontally, the ball's initial vertical speed is zero. As the ball moves, its horizontal speed remains constant, but its vertical speed increases. In fact, the ball has a constant vertical acceleration of 9.8 metres per second squared throughout its flight. To work out the ball's time of flight then, we know how far it's moved horizontally and its horizontal speed, which is constant. So once we give ourselves a little more space to work out the answer, we can use this equation and rearrange to make time t the subject by dividing both sides by speed v. Time t then is the horizontal distance of 11 metres divided by the ball's horizontal speed of 20 metres per second. This gives us a time of 0.55 seconds. For the next part of the question, you'll see that we treat the ball's vertical motion very differently. Part B asks us to calculate the vertical speed of the ball as it reaches the ground. As I said earlier, the ball accelerates downwards at 9.8 metres per second squared. So to calculate its vertical speed, we have to use this acceleration equation. A is the vertical acceleration of the ball, 9.8 metres per second squared. V is actually its final velocity. Now we are being asked for final speed, but the value of its final speed will be equal to the size of its final velocity. So it's V that we want to find. U is the ball's initial vertical velocity. Since the ball is initially moving horizontally, U is 0 metres per second. And T is the ball's time of flight, which we found earlier, 0 0.55 seconds. Substituting these values into the equation gives us this. We can then make V the subject of the equation by multiplying both sides by 0 0.55. So V is equal to 9.8 times 0 0.55 which is 5.39 metres per second. To two significant figures, which is what we should be using here, that's 5.4 metres per second. On to part C. Sketch a graph of vertical speed against time for the ball. Numerical values are required on both axes. So we'll start here with our axes, then label the y-axis speed v in metres per second, and the x-axis time t in seconds. Don't forget to draw in the origin too. The ball accelerates vertically from 0 metres per second to 5.4 metres per second in a time of 0 0.55 seconds, so the shape of the graph is like so. The last thing to do then is add our values. 5.4 metres per second at a time of 0 0.55 seconds. To make things a little clearer, we should also draw a thin dotted line from the end point of our graph to these values, and that's our sketch graph drawn. Finally, part D of the question asks us to calculate the vertical distance travelled by the ball during its flight. I'll show you two ways to work out this answer. The first method is the way I would encourage you to remember, and it's also more straightforward. Remember that the graph is of the ball's vertical speed against time, and that distance is equal to the area under a speed time graph. So the vertical distance travelled by the ball can be found by calculating this area. Since it's a triangle, we can calculate the area by multiplying half times the base times the height. That gives us half times 0 0.55 times 5.4, which is 1.485 metres, or 1.5 metres to two significant figures. As I said before, this is my preferred method, although you could work it out a different way. The ball has an initial vertical speed u of 0 metres per second, and a final vertical speed v of 5.4 metres per second. We can use this equation to calculate the ball's average speed over the 0 0.55 seconds it's accelerating. That gives us 0 plus 5.4 divided by 2, which is 2.7 metres per second. Now normally we wouldn't use d is equal to v times t to calculate vertical distance because the speed v is continually changing, but we can use it if we know the object's average speed, which we write as the letter v with a line above it. 
known as V-bar. This gives us a vertical distance of 2.7 times 0.55, which again, unsurprisingly, is 1.485 metres, which again, we round to two significant figures. Just remember that the first equation here can only be used while the object has a single constant acceleration or deceleration. And there you have it. Most pupils find projectile questions tricky, so you might want to watch this video again sometime to make sure it makes sense and try some example questions while you're at it. As for me, I'm off for a cup of tea. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.com dot co dot uk thank you for listening